I'm Eileen Roach from Designs and Machine Embroidery, and I'm excited to be here today to share with you some thoughts on old school fonts with a modern twist. So if you're just joining us, if you would just uh, type in in the comments and let me know where you're uh, you know, watching from. Hi, uh, Miss C. Lombard. I think it's Carol Lombard, but I'm not sure. In my head, I always call you Carol, but maybe you'll give me a shout out here in the comment and let me know. Um, it's been a busy week here at Dime. We've had lots of virtual events uh, for sewing machine retailers across the country. And, uh, but today is just all about Facebook Live. And, you know, we're here every Thursday, as you remember, at one o'clock. So thanks for joining us. It's really great to have you here. Um, oh, wow. So many people joining from North Carolina and Georgia and Denton, Texas. Well, that's a neighbor. Sandy, um, I live up that way, too, in North Texas. So it's really great to have everybody here. Jojo up in Minnesota. And oh, Shelly in Kennewick, Washington. I've been there. That's beautiful. And Diana in Wyoming. Windy, Wyoming. Wow. Oh, and another Eileen. Oh, me too many Eileen's. Uh, Eileen uh, Bora. Borjan in California. I'll bet you don't need too many either. And hi, Sue Brown. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, I know Sue Brown. If you don't know Sue, she's at OML Embroidery and she does the sew along for the dime door once a month. And that's the first, well, that's the um, Saturday following the last Thursday of the month. And speaking of doors, let's go ahead and switch over so you can take a look at the doors. We just have a couple to share today. So um, I found them on, you know, on Facebook. We always do a search, but last week we had showed so many that today I was really only able to find two. But if you're not following along, this is what we've been doing. January, February, March, April, and May, and June. All these designs are free on our website you could just go and search right there there's the link at the top it's not too late to join in it's you know it's a project that takes just a couple hours so um, feel free to join in at any time and you know they're going to be up there all year so um you know go ahead and and start stitching along with us i just want to get some banners going here okay so talking about um, other doors. We had uh, the one, the two that I found were Marilyn Patno, and she used a beautiful rose fabric for her door itself, that kind of gothic door, which I thought was beautiful. And I think she used a variegated thread in her roses, which is a lovely compliment to that fabric. Really, very well done. And Carl Navarez, uh, she used a kind of a checkerboard fabric for her, the building fabric, which looks just lovely. I also like how they both used a dark fabric for the walkway. It really draws you into the scene, don't you think? I like how that kind of, you know, really lets you see, you know, just draws you right in. So let's go ahead and go back to PowerPoint. I have all my, you know, my mice here. What do we call that, right? So, um, when, and I work with two, um, two mouses. <laughs> so I want to talk about these, these uh, old school fonts. And we call them our vintage fonts. So this is a jacket that I did a couple years ago with our vintage fonts. And what I love about this uh, font technique is it uses a 15 weight thread. So that's a, a thick thread with a, but it's a polyester. So it's going to be very strong and it doesn't, um, you know, fuzz. It doesn't leave any kind of, you know, lint on your sewing machine or your embroidery machine. And what I love about this, I like the holes that are in it. I think that's all just so cool, really a lot of fun. Let's see, uh, our next image has some cute samples. We have, this is a sweatshirt on that pretty model. So here we have two different fonts that we're showing. We have the um, fill, that dime, the dime is stitched with that heavy fill, and yet it has some holes. And then we have this frayed applique technique, and there's several of those fonts in our collection. They're great for menswear too. And they stitch so quick because the thread is very thick. So you don't need a lot of stitching time to get that coverage, which is pretty cool. I like that hat, that patch was stitched, you know, on a single needle machine with our hoop clip, super easy to do. 
and uh, vintage warbirds still fly. And lots of guys, you know, have uh, hobbies that, that we would like to call out to in our embroidery. This little hat, they're really X's and O's. That's all they are, is just a, you know, a series of O's with a large X sized larger so that it would really pop out of that row of embroidery. And then here's my jacket. Uh, so you can see that I actually stitched on the applique fabric separately, and then I just added it to the jacket after, uh, after the embroidery was done. But this varsity jacket actually lives in my closet at home. This is from my daughter. She graduated in 2007. That's one of the joys of being a mom, right? You get to keep all the varsity jackets and so forth. I mean, my daughter weighs, you know, about 110 pounds. And I think this jacket weighs about 110 pounds. So it's not something she's going to wear every day. But those letters are so cool, aren't they? That embroidery is chenille embroidery. So it's actually loops of, you know, thread. And it's stitched on felt with that outline, that echo of the, uh, the each letter. But we can kind of get a look like that ourselves in our software. So let's go on over. Uh, I'm going to show you some live samples, but this is some other fun images that um, or fonts and projects that I've made in our software. And I'm going to show you that. These are all of the different fonts that are available for this technique. So there's actually 18 different fonts. Some are the heavy fill, some are more of just a kind of a gnarly uh, zigzag. And then others are, um, you know, very vertical, which is great for monogramming and so forth. And then some have a little slant. So that's 18 different um, options in our vintage collection. And when you get our vintage collection, it comes with two traditional fonts, brush and Arial, which are just, you know, standard fonts that we use all the time. And I'm going to show you uh, a good way to combine them. So let's head over to camera two and take a look at um, some of those samples. And we'll do a solo layout. There we go. So here you can see, here's my, uh, my varsity letter that I tried to emulate like my daughter's jacket. So I, I stitched that um, the retro 15 weight thread and then this is felt, the, the darker gray. And then I just used a you know satin outline to finish that off. So, I mean, I think that's a lot of fun. Wouldn't that be great to give to somebody to go to their high school reunion or something? Because goodness knows they're not wearing those varsity jackets anymore. But, you know, it's also can be kind of a feminine look. I mean, this is a fun, you know, pastel thread colors that are, are available. We have three different thread combinations. We have earth tones, pastels, and brights. So and we'll take a look at each one. And I know you all want to know where I got those pins. How fun are they? Well, you know, when you when you see something like this at a quilt show, buy it because you may never see it again. And I just think they are so fun. You'll be seeing them again, I'm sure. But here's a fun way to combine the traditional font with our large vintage font. So here we have the 15 weight um, chunky thread. And then I used a matching 40 weight thread for the traditional lettering. And, you know, I think that would look great on, you know, towels or a pillow, something like that. Okay. T-shirts are fabulous for this look because one thing is it's so lightweight. I mean, it's, you know, it's just an outline, but it's a, he a heavy outline because of that thread. So, this um, was done in our embroidery tool, set, tool shed software, so we get a little arc. And of course, I did digitize this, but you most certainly could just sew this with a straight line and a zigzag and get your shape of your three surfboards. Here I have two shirts that uh, I thought I would show you the difference between the two. This is actually the very same font. Faith, I prepared my applique fabric with a fusible web on the wrong side. And once after I applied that and did the stitching, um, I then trimmed very close to that outline stitch. And, you know, that's not going to fray. This has been laundered several, several times because it's, you know, a couple months old now. 
but I love that. And I like the bold thread, that heavy thread that goes around and shows it. Now, Hope is a little different. This time I used one of my K Fawcett fabrics that I love his fabric. You all know that you see me use his stuff an awful lot. But, um, and then I left about an eighth of an inch of excess fabric beyond the outline. And then I just frayed it. I just pulled those stitches and, I mean, not stitches, but, you know, pull a thread and it'll fray. And once I launder this, it will continue to fray up to that stitch line. It'll just kind of give you that old world look, that kind of old school look that we often see in ready wear. And it's very difficult to duplicate. So that's how we do it. I love that. Here's another good example of, you know, on a hat. So here we have New York, and this is a linen fabric. Of course, linen frays beautifully. You get so much control over the fray when you use a linen. A good tip would be to try to lay your applique down, uh, you know, straight grain with the outside edge of the applique so that, you know, it's easier to fray. Like you'll notice on some of the um, bias edges of my applique here, that's not going to fray as lovely as it would on a straight edge. So just something to keep in mind. It's not that big of a deal. And here's a, a really hot, um, you know, women's hat. A lot of fun this is. It has that vintage again in the 15, and then she added some embellishments and so forth. So here, I want to show you some great ideas for men on what you can do for them. If, um, you know, they often have a man cave, right? <laughs> and so how fun is this? It's just two pieces of canvas seamed together. And then I added that man cave, enter at your own risk and the traditional warning sign like you would see in, you know, a garage or an electrical, near an electrical unit or something like that. But that'll make a great sign in, or maybe a quilt block for, for a guy, right? And then lots of men have, um, garages that they work in, you know, they restore cars or boats or airplanes. So old guys, old tools, vintage garage, better than new. Wouldn't you agree? Right? Old is good. And then I made this pillow top for my husband because we had a great uh, ski trip this year in Utah. So I just appliqued uh, kind of a mountain, right? And then placed my letters like they were going up the mountain and down the mountain. But look how bold and chunky that is. This took literally 12 minutes to stitch. That's it. And you know, that pillow top or quilt block, however you want to use it, is done. It's so fast, so fast. So here's a look at the 18 fonts that are included. So we do have three applique fonts. And then some of these uh, open kind of zigzag fonts, lettering. And then these are my favorite though, the ones that have that uh, fancy fill. I, I kind of think it looks like chalk sometimes. It's really quite attractive. Um, so now where are you gonna get this thread, right? Well, today we have a really great special and we have three different thread collections. We have are earth tones and brights and pastels. Now each of these come with, a, there's 12 colors, including a black and white. And we included black and white in every single box, every single collection, because we know in lettering, black and white is absolutely the most important colors. So we, we didn't want you to have to buy two boxes. This way you have everything you need in each individual box. Um, and it's, remember, it's 15 weight, so it's thick. You can see just how thick that is. And it is uh, polyester. It's nice and strong. You are going to use a top stitch needle for that. And um, when you use the top stitch needle, I, on my single needle machine, I most certainly do um, use uh, my needle threader. Um, my multi-needle machine, I don't use my threader with that 15 weight. Uh, it, it's a little too chunky for that. But outside of that, it's just awesome. And it works really great. So um, Martha, you recently bought them, but you haven't used them. Let's see. Well, you should use them. Don't be afraid. Again, remember, you have to use that top stitch needle. That's what's going to give you success. 
And, um, uh, you know, fabric, does it really matter? You're going to treat your fabric with traditional stabilizer just as you normally would. It's not all that different. And these are really low stitch count designs for the finished look. It's, you know, you really get a, a heavy fill without a lot of needle penetration. So uh, I love that. That's one of my favorite features about that because, you know, time is uh, of the essence, right? I don't, you know, many years ago, I would spend hours and hours and hours stitching. Um, maybe, you know, one large project, but today things that will have to speed up a little bit more. So I don't always, uh, I like those fast fill designs for sure. And applique. And the applique that comes in there is just really fabulous. So why don't we take a look at software so you can see how that really works. So if you just bear with me a minute here, I'm going to pull up some of the features that are in, um, the, the software. So if you were to purchase this um, today, you actually would get the 18 fonts and you would also get the um, two additional traditional fonts that are included with this font collection. And of course it comes with embroidery uh, tool shed. Now, Eugenia, you asked, what is a top stitch needle? Well, a top stitch needle is a a, a very large eye needle and it has um it's the size is 116 so it has a large eye that allows that heavy thread to feed through the needle and also the you know stay on the shaft as the thread you know penetrates through the fabric so it it makes it just super easy yeah let's see okay she loves, Sarah Jones loves watching your software in action when watching Pep with OM. Oh, I know our software is fabulous. So we're now what we're going to take a look at is the vintage font. So let's go ahead and switch over there. So here I've typed out varsity and I will turn on the 3D so you can see that, you know, a little bit better, right? And I'll select it and I can play with this. I can size, resize. I can also um, select the text tool. And with that selected, I can uh, choose envelope. And let's go ahead and do pennant right. And now I'm gonna get that pennant shape that I showed you uh, in a previous slide, right? So how cool is that? And I have a lot of control over this. I can make it narrower. I can, you know, um, enlarge, I can rotate. It's, it's really, very friendly. Very, and if I don't like what I just did, no worries. I can go ahead and click back the back arrow and I can keep going back until I'm where I want to be. And if you know I want to go forward, that arrow is right there at all times. Super easy. Um, Mendy wanted to know is, um, are there any designs included be besides the font? No, this is just a font collection and there's 18 fonts with the traditional uh, two other fonts, brush and Arial. So that's a total of 20 fonts. Let's see. So uh, some people say, uh, Charlene says her top stitch needle is a 9014. You have 116, but it doesn't say top stitch. Well, you can use a top stitch needle that is 9014. Um, you most certainly can. And the 100 by 16, if it doesn't say top stitch, then it is not a top stitch. It's just a very heavy needle for like heavy uh, fabrics, multiple layers of denim and that kind of thing. L okay, let's see, are these fonts in vintage software? They are in vintage software. So if you have vintage software, you are good to go. And then Charlene, you wanna know, will these fonts work with other software? Um, well, will they work with other software? You can bring them into other software, but you're going to get all of your editing abilities in Embroidery Toolshed. So I would suggest, and that's a free program that you will use to, um, to use the fonts, right? So you'll purchase that uh, vintage font collection. It comes with Embroidery Toolshed and that's where the fonts are installed. If you then want to work, you know, take some uh, a text message or something that you've written into your other software, you would just save it in the format that your other software would read. So, okay, let's go back to software. So what else can we show you? I do have a couple of uh, fun things. Like let's take a look at the pins. 
And you can see here the pins all stitched in a different color. But it would be nice if I shared that screen, wouldn't it? So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Um, and uh, so now here you could see that all of those, th there's four letters and they're all different, which is super easy to do. So I'm just going to select the um, text icon to show you how easy it is to write something in this software. And I'll click apply. And when I hover over the, the window, it shows me the characters that are available in that font. When I click on that, it then takes me to all of the fonts that are on my computer. And in this instance, uh, I'm looking right now at the vintage font. So I'll go ahead and select Damage Vintage, and it will change it accordingly. And then I can go to... Um, general or settings um, and in my uh, commands down here it says color change so right now I none is the default so that means it's going to stitch the entire word in one color but I can change that to every other character every character so here with one click now I have told the machine to stop after every one so uh, let's see, what else do we have? Here's how I did the combination of Peter and the traditional. So let's go ahead and try, um, select the text tool and click anywhere on the screen. And I'll, I'll type the capital P. And again, I'm going to go and select my vintage font. And damage is fine. And I'll turn on that realistic view and I'm going to enlarge that design by just dragging on the corner, selecting it and dragging on the corner. Now I'll select my text tool again and click on the screen. And now I'm going to write Peter, well, Eater, <laughs> E-T-E-R. And at this point, I can bring it over next to the P and I can shrink it down and depending on, you know, what my finished project is, I may want it to be quite large, the P, and just kind of work this together till I'm happy with it. I can also size disproportionately, right? I can pull it down and make it a little taller than uh, the digitizer intended. And I kind of like that because the E nest right inside that uh, underneath the swoop of the P, which I think looks really nice. Um, so these, all these editing tools are right at your fingertips, um, right at your fingertips when you purchase these uh, fonts. So let's go ahead and take a look at the vintage garage uh, sign that I made, the old guys, old tools, better than new, this vintage garage. So well, let's look at how we did this circle. So again, I'm going to select the text tool, click on the screen, enter my text in the properties box and you know i'm just typing on my keyboard i'm hitting the space bar when i want to uh, put a space between the words just like regular typing just like you always would when you're typing so let's go ahead and select um oh i think it was ball house where is that here we go we'll select that and now I want to make that in a circle, just a single arch. So all I have to do is hit a uh, circle and apply over here in the properties box. And now I have the ability to edit this as I'd like. I can widen that curve. I can narrow that curve, make it really peaked. Um, I can rotate the words so that it's not all the way at the top. I can do any position that I want uh, to undo. I just click my back arrow I most certainly can make it larger. I have all that ability. I can also control the placement of all the individual letters. So when I click on a blue diamond and move it to the right or the left, it will drag all of the words with it. It gives you complete control over how you want to operate this um, this message. So, you know, I love that. And oftentimes, you know, it's the last thing I would apply 
when I'm creating a sign like this because I would do um, the better than new and vintage garage first so that I could then size my arch over top. So as you could see, I had, you know, tweaked it quite a bit. I've really made that quite large now. Okay, let's see. Uh, people want to know about, uh, Janine Pauly wants to know about ordering the thread. Well, here, I'm going to show you a, uh, a great offer that we have. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, these. These are the two traditional fonts that come with it. So um, let's take a look. Yep. Here is what you would get with it today if you purchase this week. It's $129 for the 18 fonts plus those true traditional fonts, and you get a free box of the 15 weight thread. You can select the pastel, the earth tones, or the bright. So here on the left is the pastels. And remember, black and white comes with every one. Uh, so, and here's the brights. They're just beautiful. I did have a uh, little Christmas project that I did that I can show you. Um, let me bring that over on screen over here because you know the brights are, um, well, I don't know which one's my favorite. There are so many that I like. Yeah, love the free shipping. You're welcome, Judy Warren. I know you all really love the free shipping and, and the jacket. You like that jacket? Yeah, that's beautiful for sure. For sure. So let me show you this um, this joy that I did. Now, you know, what's really fun is this is a ribbon, a very inexpensive ribbon that I purchased at a big, big box store. And so is the red that's underneath the word joy. That's another ribbon. I just stacked the two ribbons together, stitched the word joy, and then, um, you know, fringed it so that it, you know, there's a little bit of fray. And this is a great look for, you know, a, a Christmas time. And I guess we need to be starting on that, right? Yeah. Um, let's see. Tell us more about ordering the thread. Yeah. Well, there, the thread, um, the link, just go to dzgns.com and we have the, the link um, at DZGNS, it's right on the home page right there. You'll just find it right there. And again, free shipping, 18 fonts, and you get to pick the thread, the box of thread. So you might want pastel, you might want brights, you might want the earth tones. You know, it's hard to say um, because earth tones was what I used for this jacket, believe it or not. And, you know, it's hard to do on denim to pick fabric that thread that really pops, but. I think I did a good job on this jacket. I love this jacket. I don't wear it very often because I'm not big on wearing signage, but it's fun, right? So I applicated those three words onto the jacket and then I hooped it again and stitched every day right across. Really fun stuff. Fun, fun, fun. Aren't we lucky all these tools, toys that we have? Yeah, really, really fun. Yeah, the ribbon is it was a good idea. And you know, that ribbon is, you know, it's readily available now. I mean, Christmas, they start putting that out so early, so, so early. So next week we have um, the, the July door. And so I told you that July is my favorite month. And um, so we are excited to uh, show you the, the July door. I've been working on it and it's ready. It's all ready to go. Kathy, uh, Purdy wants to know, is the uh, thread available by the spool? It is also available individually by the spool. Please don't ask me how much it costs. I'm sure it's there on the website. <laughs> but um, I don't have all those answers, right? But so next week, we're going to do that, the dime door. And then I have a really exciting brand new product to show you next week. Uh, we gave you a sneak peek when Deborah Jones was with me um, and we were talking all about stabilizer, we were talking about sticky stabilizer and we kind of showed our hand that we have a new sticky hoop coming out. And um, so we're gonna show that next week. That'll be a lot of fun. And then Martha, how can we tell if a design will work with this 15 weight thread? Well, it has to be digitized specifically for 15 weight thread. If it is not digitized specifically for 15 weight thread, the stitches will be overlapped too close together and you'll probably have thread breakage. So you really must use that thread 
with designs that have been digitized for that. Now, if you have um, software and you know settings, just think wide open. You want space between your stitches. And if you are sewing with this thread, you want a long stitch length like 4.0. I would test at 4.0 if you're doing a running stitch and doing you know, some top stitching, some edge stitching with just a straight running stitch, two or three rows, is such an impact. You'd be surprised at how beautiful that stitch is. Um, I would be careful about, you know, decorative stitches that don't allow you to control the stitch length because it, it's a thick thread. So, you know, you want it to lay out beautifully and add um, a, as much, you know, mileage as you can. So um, also it's great in the serger, in the lower looper. Boy, it does fast work in the serger. It just whip up an edge like nobody's business. So if you are a serger, um, aficionado, try it in your serger. I don't play with my serger enough, that's for sure. So, uh, but you'll, you know, you'll be learning more about this and most certainly we're, we're always here, you know, on Facebook and answering social media. So I hope that you would jump in and take advantage of this special offer. Remember it's 129, comes with 12 spools of thread. There's 18 traditional fonts and that two extra traditional. So it's a lot of fun, comes with embroidery tool shed if you remember. A super easy program to use. You just download it. You can copy and paste and print a template. You know, it gives you all of the editing tools that you'll need for your lettering when you purchase your vintage fonts. So um, if you're using that embroidery tool shed, tool shed as your basic software, then you're good to go. Just go ahead and purchase that and uh, you'll be all ready to stitch. So I appreciate you sharing uh, your time with me today and I'm look forward to I'm looking forward to next Thursday and we'll be here to show the June, I mean the July door. And you know, if you know me, if you know anything about me, we're probably gonna be near water. So I hope to see you here next week. Thanks for watching.